Welcome to another Notes for Engineers video. I'm Alistair Cook and we're continuing our investigation of the Cohesity data platform. This cluster is the one that runs in the vBrownBag mobile lab and I've upgraded it to version 6.4. That's the current feature release of the Cohesity data platform. 6.4 has a whole heap of new features in them and the one we're going to look at today is called data migration. It's the feature that allows us to take infrequently accessed or old files off an existing legacy file server of some sort and migrate them onto the Cohesity data platform without changing the way they're accessed by clients. So let's, let's dig in and take a look at this feature. First off, of course, always read the manual. Uh, here's the user guide for version 6.4. I downloaded this off the support site yesterday and we're going to have a look into this file and object section at data migration. I wrote about this feature a couple of weeks ago and it, I think it's a really important thing as we're finding that file servers are embedded into our applications and, and logic and, and how we do our business but the data on them gets very stale and so we have these relatively expensive file servers and NAS appliances that we keep having to expand capacity on. Separately, we have the Cohesity data platform deployed out, which is very low cost to use capacity and is very capacity efficient. Older file servers, older NAS appliances typically don't have dedupe and compression, and so we're paying quite a lot for the amount of storage they have. Cohesity platform is a great place to migrate things to. The data migration feature works with both NFS servers that are Linux based or Windows file servers. The behavior is a little different. With NFS servers, the Cohesity platform is mounted up to the NFS server itself and a symbolic link is put in place on the NFS server. So the clients access exactly the same NFS share as they've always done. And it's the NFS server that then accesses in the background to the Cohesity platform. Windows doesn't work that way, so Windows works a little bit differently. With Windows, we'll create a file share, an SMB file share on the Cohesity platform as part of setting up the data migration. And the client side is going to see a symbolic link on the original location and follow that to the share on the Cohesity data platform. So in this case for, for Windows, the Windows client is going to do the redirection rather than the redirection happening out through that NFS server. To enable that we have to enable the symlink evaluation that we see in here. So let's take a look at the default settings that will be on your Windows Server before you do this. Uh, run a prompt as administrator, paste in the command. And what we see is that local symbolic links are supported but remote not. So we need to pop back into the documentation and find that one command that changes the remote to remote symbolic link behavior. Turn that on, go back and check it. And now remote to remote symbolic links. That means client side access out to the remote file shares. Once that's enabled on the file server, then we can pop back in and we can have a look at the migrate data job. Yeah, let's not read the documentation. Let's just go and do it. It's in file services under data migration. And we say migrate data, please. Give it a job. Well, what am I going to migrate? Good question. Here on my file server, I have a folder called ref data that contains a whole lot of documentation of things. And this particular server is a Supermicro E308D running vSphere. And here's all of the documentation for that E300. Of course, that's through the local file system. Uh, how large is that local file system? So that file share has currently got 178 megabytes of data and it's not particularly large. But it's also accessible as a share, so we can go to dc slash ref data and we can see exactly the same file, E308D manual, accessible through that file share. Let's pop back in here and so it's going to be ref data is our file share. And then we need a source. We're just going to register a new source. It's going to be a NAS mount point. Cool, register NAS the mass mount point. Windows file sharing, and it's going to be DC ref data. And then our username is going to be lab administrator. I suggest you use something a little more restricted than the administrator account. register that source and then it says what do you want to 
migrate. A migration job can only have a single file share, so a single migration job migrates data for a single file share. So let's add that. It's going to go to our default storage main. I'm going to create a new target. So the new target is the view where the data is going to be migrated to and also the file share on the Cohesity platform uh, containing that file share. What are we going to migrate? Uh, I want to go by the last modified date that is at least 12 months old. So files that haven't been uh, that be modified more than 12 months ago and are greater than one megabyte in size. And I probably don't want to run this at 3.30 in the afternoon. Let's do this at 3.30 a.m. and retain our snapshots for 14 days. That seems reasonable. What have we got in the advanced settings? Uh, QoS policy, so where do I want to store the data? I definitely want to store this on a low cost, durable location, which is the hard drive tier. No exclusions, no indexing, I don't, I'm not changing, I'm not going to access data through the Cohesity platform, all of my access is going to be through the original file share. So let's go ahead and create that migration job. Job has been created, and then we can run that job now. Run now, submitted, in progress. So we can see some progress going on at the moment. So it's preparing. Let's take a look at the background. So we have got a brand new view called Ref Data. And we've got a share also called Ref Data. Okay. Let's copy the SMB path and take a look at that Ref Data on the Cohesity cluster. Got a bunch of files there already. I wonder if that means that files have already been moved off my local file system. Yep, lots of stuff's been replaced as being a symlink. So that E208D manual is now a symlink. Let's look at that through the original share. Ref data share still shows as a symlink of zero size. And if I open that, I've still got my documentation accessed through the same file share that I've always accessed it through. So that's pretty cool, that's migrated some data onto the ref data share. Let's take a look at whether that's changed the size on disk of my ref data folder on the file server. This was 178 megabytes on disk before, it's now down to 64 megabytes on disk. So that 114 megabytes that's been placed on the share has clearly come out of here, reduced the uh, load, the capacity requirements on my file server. That was really quick and easy to set up. Hmm. Got a warning status. What does the warning status tell us? tells us that some files haven't actually been migrated. So I'm probably going to have to take a look at some of the underlying uh, files in here. It doesn't look like absolutely everything uh, got migrated that should have. Uh, so if we pop back into here and hit ref data, you know, this uh, E308, ooh, that hasn't been migrated, my E308D. Let's take a look at the E200. So through the file share, uh, we can access the ETH 208D that has been migrated. Yeah, it's still same place and it's accessible in exactly the same fashion as we did before. So I've probably got some issues on my file system and need to take a look at that. It's entirely possible I still had this file open when that migration run ran and that's why it wouldn't migrate. But we can see a couple of files that haven't migrated. There may well be some oddities. This file system's been around for a long time. However, we did get two-thirds of the contents of that file share got moved to the Cohesity platform and is now taking up less space on my file server. While I was editing the first part of the video, I, I ran the data migration job again. So you can see that there's a, a run 11 minutes later that it was a success and that migrated an additional 45 megabytes of data. What I think had happened was that uh, Acrobat had some locks on the files that weren't migrating. And now we can see that 
all of the files that are over a megabyte in size in that ref data folder have been migrated across and not only that but files that, that failed to migrate in the first job that weren't actually open by Acrobat have also migrated in the second job. So even more has moved. Now my 178 megabyte ref data folder is only 17 megabytes, 18 megabytes on disk. So 90% of the file system use for this share has now been migrated across onto the Cohesity data platform where it's compressed and deduplicated and far more cost effective to store. I am really impressed with this data migration functionality. It's transparent to the end user, it's as we saw pretty fast to operate and presumably as, as this behavior where it's getting better and better at migrating data as there are transient locks maybe on data the data is going to get progressively migrated off your file server and onto the Cohesity platform. So I'm really impressed this looks like really cool technology to relieve stress on old file servers and NAS appliances. That's the end of our coverage today of the data migration feature in the Cohesity Data Platform version 6.4. Stay tuned to the Notes for Engineers YouTube channel. I'll be posting more videos as I learn more about the Cohesity Platform. And do make sure to check out my blog at demitas.co.nz NZ for uh, my American friends, uh, where I write about my thoughts about this as well as things that are related to the uh, Cohesity Platform. Thanks for joining me. Talk to you on the next video.